am a PhD student uh, at um, East China Normal University in Shanghai. And uh, for, my work, for my PhD, I work on understanding um, coastal land reclamation um, as a process of building land uh, beyond uh, the uh, beyond the lim beyond limit of uh, land resources so we all know about um, structures from uh, dubai for example but when i came here and started traveling around china i saw this massive uh, alteration uh, in the coast and it's it's a fascinating uh, topic for me to start so i started my phd in early 2016 uh, that was the time when our things in just was was launched. Uh, but to begin uh, with our things in, I'm an absolute beginner to uh, to our, our things in with my degree in um, masters, uh, bachelor's of arts in geography. Um, I tried my best to understand JavaScript to understand uh, geography as a whole. But I'm absolute uh, beginner to Google our things in, and I try to work it out with fantastic tutorials online. I've tried my best to understand how it will work out. So before Google Earth uh, Engine, uh, I worked on this paper, which is published in Accl Applied Geography, looking into 16 mega cities um, around the world. And um, this was before uh, Google Earth Engine. And I wish Google Earth Engine was there and I was able to do so, because the idea for me to, uh, to do was a time series to look at coastal change from 1984 till 2018, but then downloading so much images and in academia, you have a pressure of publishing papers as well. Um, so uh, I had to work on this paper. So I took two satellite imagery to look at 16 cities. Um, so on, on the first one is, is Shanghai over here, which uh, between 1984 and, and 2018, it has reclaimed more than, more than 500 square kilometers. The yellow line over here is the shoreline of 1984. And the red one is, is the current one. It's actually not current. It's still, uh, it's, it was 2017. And then there are other cities in China. This is Shenzhen. And you can see the entire coastline has, has changed and actually reclaimed uh, from, from the sea. In Philippines, have reclaimed this entire land uh, for their IT industry. I was also interested in Lagos in Nigeria where they are reclaiming land for this beautiful, uh, it's, it's an IT complex, again, uh, known as Echo Antarctic, and you can check their website. So um, we worked on uh, this, uh, worked on this looking at 16 mega cities, but then after that, um, Google Attention came, and with that, uh, this paper was published in Nature um, Journal, where uh, we're looking at uh, change in the surface water data set and um, this was a breakthrough for my PhD, to be honest. Uh, and I worked on uh, this data set quite intensively. And I was looking at the uh, transition. If you look at, if you work on this data set, they, they have a couple of bands there. And one of them is transition, which basically showing the change uh, between 1984 and uh, 2018. So um, there, there, there are mainly two sub bands, which I use, which was new permanent which basically is a new water pixel. For example, you're digging in a, a lake and that lake uh, is new permanent. But I was also looking at lost permanent, which is red here. You can see all these beautiful structures on the coast of Dubai uh, being reclaimed over here. It's basically telling you that there was water in 1984, but in 2015, these are land. So it's basically telling you they are lost. So the basic idea was to flip the entire concept of um, of global surface water. So I'm not using surface water to detect water. I'm using surface water to de detect land, but on a water surface. So on the left-hand side, that's Shanghai over here. And there's much of reclamation in the entire Chinese coast for various drivers, for various reasons. And that's what I'm working on as well. Uh, but then uh, when you uh, work on coast, you might be aware with this um, uh, a conflict between a conflict of definitions between um, what is coastal zone actually. So I actually uh, decided to use SRTM and have this buffer of 10 kilometers inside land and 10 kilometer out to this to take it as uh, a coastal buffer, uh, define it as my own coastal zone to understand reclamation. Uh, however, this process, this method has certain limitations because when you're taking 10 kilometers, 
you also take into consider uh, rivers and, and streams and other uh, water bodies as well. I'm still working on uh, to define coastal zone and how I've, I've come through a uh, very close. But when I started working on uh, initially, I was very, it was, it was beginning. So, but, but I was able to understand uh, some of the uh, codes from the tutorials online. And this was my beginning where I was using my own polygon and uh, I, I basically used the reduced to vectors in order to get a vector file. And then I was able to calculate the area of reclaimed land using the global surface water data set. So if you can see here where I use the transition band and number three is equal to lost permanent, which is basically permanent loss of water bodies, which my case here is a reclaimed land. And this entire black portion over here, which I have displayed here using map.layer is basically di displaying uh, my table and also the result of the KML. And I was able to export this uh, as a KML and then view it on Google on Google Earth, which I will show you in my next slide. Uh, I will uh, rather finish my entire slide and I'll quickly go through the code uh, later, but this is how the result comes. So I will to export a certain portion of the reclaimed land which was the red one is showing uh, the loss permanent, which is a uh, land gain. And the blue one is showing a uh, new permanent, which is a land lost best basically. But then interpretation of these images are very, very important. For example, on the left side here in Tianjin, this red, red portion here is a reclaimed, it's an anthropogenic reclaimed land. It's an it's a land reclamation project at the Tianjin port. However, here, in uh, Vietnam on, on left, this is a natural sedimentation. <laughs> this, is, this is not a uh, rec reclamation. This is not by uh, human instrument, in intervention. Uh, there are a couple of ways to, again, look deeper into this to do an object-based classification because the shape of which we as human construct is very different than the shape when uh, natural features are being formed. Um, when interpreting the water bodies over here, in Tianjin, this I know because of my field study, this portion here is an entire aquaculture base. Um, it's completely aquaculture here. So there's uh, interpreting image as a part of uh, my course as a, as a geographer has been uh, very useful. But then I was able to do this uh, for places around the world using global surface, uh, using Google Earth Engine and global surface data set. So if you can see, this is Tianjin or the reclaimed land. That's Bangladesh, that's uh, the Ganges Delta. But again, this is reclaimed by nature. This is normal um, sedimentation. Seoul in South Korea, it's anthropogenic. Here in Singapore, the Singapore, massive Singapore airport, very beautiful airport reclaimed by humans. There are a couple of other places around the world where uh, there has been land gain, uh, but the process are, processes are different. Uh, here in, in Canada, it's just melting ice melt, for example, uh, as an exposure of uh, land. But then you have Mississippi Delta, where some of the places are losing ground uh, here in Sundarban Delta. So I was trying to explain uh, uh, this equilibrium of losing and ga gaining land. And I was very close to actually publish this as well. But then this happened. Um, it was... Uh, uh, I was probably two months, one month delay, and this paper was published in August 27. And I was speaking with Pradeep that I've submitted this um, in Nature and hopefully it comes out. But then this paper was published uh, using the same global surface water data set. And the idea was the same to flip the entire concept and use uh, uh, the concept of glo global surface water data set for uh, water. But then also, uh, because it's a reclaimed land, to be honest, uh, uh, shoreline, to extract natural shoreline is probably tricky. But extracting shoreline, which is constructed by human using very bizarre shapes, is even more complicated than you actually imagine. So uh, I've contacted people at Deltras, and they, they are working very hard in order to understand coastline change and extracting coastline. And I will go through this code very briefly because I'm also trying to understand the code uh, once I finish. But then I was also able to use Google Earth Engine to kind of have this time series very quickly. This is a very quick uh, NDVI time series uh, looking at uh, Pudong district of Shanghai. I am currently currently very close to here uh, in, my in my university. So 
this is 1986. And over the years, if you see, um, they have reclaimed quite a bit of land. This is Pudong Airport currently over here. And you can, you can also see the shift of greenness from, um, from city center quite in the south of Shanghai. But you can actually see this artificial lake where I'm going next week, probably with my friends to have a picnic. Um, it's, it's, it's an artificial lake uh, built, uh, reclaimed uh, over just four years. It's just during four years or five years was reclaimed. So these are a very interesting uh, uh, kind of anthropogenic footprint, which I'm trying to understand and also its sustainability. But I also want to focus, thank you to Madhusudan for the last um, Earth Engine community, uh, co uh, the teacher skills segment where he explained how can you use a nighttime uh, linear regression of a nighttime and see the trend. I use that same concept from a GPS point which I took over reclaimed land. And I did a ground validation using uh, street maps from Baidu or Google doesn't work in China, but I used Baidu maps and my own field uh, uh, photographs in order to understand the land use of uh, reclaimed land. So why you are building land, um, who are who are the people living there, how many people are living there. So this map gives an idea of, of exactly uh, the, the kind of work which I'm trying to do. So thank you again, the community to, uh, which actually helped me in my in my project here and then um there i will quickly move on to uh, show a couple of um code a couple of slides some of these things is uh, the google time slide here you can see the reclamation this is in northeast of china it's not dubai it's northeast of china where reclamation of this beautiful structure happened around between uh, three to four years um same at Shanghai. Right now, I'm here in Shanghai, and uh, this this is I'm I'm currently right now sitting here. It's not that far from the coast, but if you can see this reclaimed land over just uh, a couple of years, and it's been the interesting part is that Shanghai is reclaiming more, but even uh, near to the coast, there are a couple of places where um, nature is playing its role. For example, this island over here is is basically a natural sedimentation. It's actually now a wetland. A reserve for Shanghai and reserve very very carefully but then these are the certain places which has been reclaimed in in Shanghai um, over a couple of years and now if you want to prepare this uh, wonderful uh, time series uh, videos uh, this quote by Andrew uh, is very very useful basically it, it, uh, it's on the, on the slide, you can actually work it out. It's very useful for when you're looking at, uh, you're giving presentations, I use quite often. Um, we're looking at, so here in the code we took, uh, we, he took uh, Landsat 5, uh, master of the clover with a 25% and uh, filter it to your geometry. Uh, many of us, we're quite aware with the uh, gaps in Landsat 7. So here's the code itself uh, where you can fill in the gaps in Landsat 7. Do it for Landsat 8 as well. Have a mosaic of all your bands, have a composite, and, and clip uh, that R into a, making a collection. Have a date between 1984. That's what I used, uh, 1984 to in 2018. And then you can export that as, as, your, uh, as a video over here, right here. And then you can basically show off uh, in your presentations when you're looking at uh, time series. The, the other one, uh, this one is a bit uh, interesting for me, is working on to get extracting the coastline. Uh, and it's very uh, difficult to, to extract reclaimed land coastline because of two reasons. One is getting, you need uh, elevation model, right? So you're looking at SRTM, but SRTM was launched in the year 2000. Now between 2000 and 2018, Shanghai reclaimed around 300 square kilometers. And when you're reclaiming 300 square kilometers, there is an alteration in, in the elevation of the coast, which is not accounted for if you're using SRTM. So I just modified this code to use ELOS, which is again was launched in 2011. And between 2011 and 2018, Shanghai has reclaimed 100 square kilometer, altering, altering its morphology. So getting uh, getting a proper elevation data set is actually very crucial. So I'm trying to work on how to get a digital elevation model using SAR imagery so that I can have a latest 
alteration in, alteration in the morphology so that I can also calculate its vulnerability and sustainability in, 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 the, in the near future. And if you, uh, this code, from uh, Deltas over here, Edward uh, Edward Morris works with a uh, project in Fast, so we can well, we can look at their website. But he basically worked in Netherlands with Deltas, and there he they use OSTO segmentation, where they it's it's a binary image where where you're trying to get uh, your uh, thresholds, the lower and the upper threshold, and you're trying to implement that threshold uh, to to your image so that you you get uh, a, a very neat coastline of reclaimed land. Just for a trivia, for a question answer round, uh, you can you can tap your answers in the in the box in in, in your YouTube. The the image will appear. There are a few certain dots over here. Uh, what do you think think uh, those dots are? Uh, it's just a game for image interpretation. But then this is using sentinel Im images. These are the dikes which are being constructed. So then the sediment comes and fill in, and you have a new reclaimed land uh, over Shanghai. This is an image of uh, month of March when I was there in my field. I can change the date over here, and I can get uh, the image. Uh, I can change the date over here, and I can get get an image actually of last week and see what is the progress. So you can actually export this as a vector file and uh, get your co proper coastline um, over reclaimed over and reclaimed land. But it's fascinating that they actually can view all these uh, dikes. And these are uh, these by the end of by the time I finish my PhD, this land will be reclaimed and that there will be an artificial wetland. Um, yeah. So that's the question. What do you think these are? Uh, tap in your answers. Uh, our thing in community will give you chocolates. Uh, uh, so that that's about it, to be honest. Uh, uh, these these are the certain things which I'm working on. The last slide is basically when I was in my field. Um, there there are certain villas on the reclaimed land, so they're land being reclaimed for a very posh uh, class of our society. And this was uh, the billboard uh, in order to book in order to buy one of those villas, and it says seventy one percent of the earth is covered by sea only for a few people. Um, there's a very interesting um, a concept which I'm working on in trying to understand why we are building land. And, and it's not a Chinese concept. It's happening in Jakarta. It's happening in, in Singapore, Malaysia, all the South Asian cities. So it's, it's a very interesting topic to look forward, especially in the, in the era of sea level rise. I hope I've not taken much time, but uh, I, will, I will stop over here. Um, Greg, what do you think?